Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the x lite X552 Ultra Carbon Helmet. By definition, an adventure helmet blends motocross and road disciplines by giving you both a peak and a visor. But there are two main routes to an adventure helmet. The first is to start with a motocross style lid and add a visor. And the second is to start with a road helmet and then put on a peak. This x lite X552 Ultra Carbon is one of the clearest examples I've seen yet of a road helmet with a peak. And x lite are pretty upfront about that in their blurb. They say this is a helmet with a road going sole that's ideal for riders who like tarmac and dirt roads. Now I'd say it's not just the sole that's road going, it's the majority of the helmet. The X552 Ultra Carbon is very heavily based on x lites X903 Ultra Carbon, which is their sports touring helmet. x lite have changed the front vent, the trim around the base of the helmet, and they've added holes at either side and also on the top so the peak can be attached, and then they've added a peak. And unless I'm missing something, that is it. The X552 is approved to the new ECE 2206 safety standard, while the old 903 is still ECE 2205 as we record this. But I'll bet that's just a formality, really, rather than a fundamental difference between the two helmets. OK, so now we're clear about what this helmet is. Let's run through the essential details. And I'll also give you my experience based on around 250 road miles wearing this one. As the ultra carbon part of the name suggests, there's a lot of carbon fibre within the composite that makes up the X552's shell structure. The X552, this one in a size medium, weighs in on our scales at 1,681 grams, which is neither great nor terrible. Really, it's just kind of average for a lid like this. Ventilation on this helmet comes through at the chin and the top. The chin vent is a chunky slider that's easy to use and gives a clear route for air to flow through the chin bar and into the eye port. I found that gave a reasonable amount of airflow without really being outstanding. The one up top is less easy to find because the peak sits just over the top of it. But if you slide the hand between the shell and the peak, then that will open the vent. I found that one to be less effective than the chin vent, possibly because this peak deflects air over the top and away from the intake, I guess. Air that does get in can travel through circulation channels inside and then escape through the exhaust vents at the rear of the lid. The peak attaches in three points and the angle can be adjusted slightly by loosening the top screw and then sliding the peak back and forward. There's about 20 millimetres of difference between the tip of the peak when it's fully back and fully forward. Now all peaks have an effect on aerodynamic performance no matter how hard a manufacturer works to reduce the effect. Some create a minimal disruption and others can wreak havoc, especially if you try and ride at motorway speeds for any length of time. I'd say this one sits somewhere in the middle of that scale and it will largely depend on the bike you ride. I spent a very short time wearing this on a Suzuki GSX-S 1000 GT just for logistical reasons, not because I thought this helmet suited that bike and I could feel the airflow pushing the peak down as I rode. I've had that before on peaked helmets and it ended in very sore neck muscles from the strain of lifting my head against the downforce so I could see where I was going. Once I moved over and started riding the Suzuki V-Strom 800 that I used for the bulk of the miles while doing this review, that force was reduced, but I could still feel that pressure. It didn't end in neck ache this time, but I did deliberately avoid wearing this helmet for extended motorway or dual carriageway rides because I could feel that pressure pushing down the peak and I didn't fancy spending a weekend recovering from the strain of overcoming that pressure. One way around it would be to ride without the peak. That's called street mode and it's something you get on quite a few adventure helmets where they give you a few bits and bobs to help convert the helmet for use without the peak. There's nothing like that with this helmet, so this really doesn't have a street mode as far as I'm concerned. You could ride without the peak and without the screws that hold it in, but I don't think it would have taken much for x lite to include some shorter screws to fill those mounting holes if you rode without the peak. The visor doesn't rely on the peak for mounting, and you can also ride with the peak but no visor. Goggles will fit, but they're a bit of a squeeze, and some bigger goggles might not go in there. So let's be frank, this isn't a helmet, in my opinion, for serious off-road riding. OK, let's move on to the visor. It's got a central tab for lifting and lowering, and there are five steps from fully open until the visor lip comes to rest on the lower seal. Then you push it down on the tab to secure it shut, and then it takes a firm pull to release it again. I had no problems running the visor slightly open to let some air into the lid. But where I did struggle a little at first was getting hold of the visor to lower it from fully open. There's not much clearance between the tip of the visor and the peak, especially when you're wearing gloves, and that made it tricky to get a finger in there to lower it again. Then I worked out that what was easier was to push the top left edge of the visor just here to lower it. The visor is protected against mist by a pinlock insert that's supplied with the helmet and unusually for x lite you have to install this one yourself. 
Then there's an internal sun visor that operates on a switch by the left ear, and that gives reasonable coverage in terms of drop and tint. It's also anti-fog coated to give you clear vision when it's damp, and I found that to work quite well. Right then, onto the interior. The lining is fully removable, and it's got a very soft, comfortable covering. If you have problems fitting spectacle arms inside it, then you can pull sections from the top of the cheek pad filling, and that'll make room for the spectacle arms. The cheek pads are also emergency release, which is hopefully something you'll never have to worry yourself with, but it might make it easier for a medic to remove your lid if they absolutely need to. The skull pad's also got a feature that I've only ever seen on Nolan and x -Lite helmets, which they call liner positioning control. So if the helmet is angled too far forward or too far back for you, then you can adjust a plastic belt at the back of the neck roll to make sure it sits on your head in the way you prefer. Behind the lining, there are recesses for intercom speakers and the strap fastener for this helmet is a sporty D-ring setup. Right then, let's go back to intercoms. The X552 is set up for the Encom system that's shared by Nolan and x -Lite, who are sister brands, but you don't have to fit an Encom system. There's nothing with this helmet to stop a universal comm system going on there. Pulling this rubber bung out just here lets a unit sit flat on the side and then there's room to even clamp it to the shell rather than having to use a self-adhesive pad. The speaker recesses inside aren't quite big enough for Cardo's 40mm speakers, so you'll probably need to use the boosters that come with the intercom if you want to fit one of those. But I fitted a Senna ST1 Spider unit and it went on very easily. The hardest part really was refitting the helmet liner, which if I'm honest feels needlessly complicated. Right, let's cover off sizing approvals and prices. The X552 comes in sizes from double extra small up to triple extra large, and there are three shell sizes to cover that range. Helmet sizes up to and including medium go in the smallest shell, large gets its own shell, and then XL and above go in the biggest of all the shells. In terms of approvals, the X552 Ultra Carbon meets the ECE2206 standard for road use, which is the most up-to-date version. As for prices, there's a plain carbon design that costs £429.99 as we record this, and it's £499.99 for graphics like this Latitude design. Okay then, here are my thoughts based on 250 miles or so of wearing this helmet. I like the X903 Ultra Carbon helmet that x -Lite have used as the basis for this lid, but I don't think adding a peak does much for it. I was concerned about the effect the aerodynamics would have for any sustained riding at motorway speeds, and I'd advise keeping the peak as far back on its adjustment as possible to try and get the air to hit the underside of the peak rather than having that air push the peak down. Using the liner positioning control adjuster can also tilt the helmet back to help keep that airflow under the visor. The reason I say that is because if air pushes your head back, then at least you can still see where you're going. That peak also obstructs operating the visor properly, even if there is a way of getting around it a bit by pushing the visor from above the peak rather than trying to get between the shell and the peak. There are times when that peak is a good thing to have. I found it very handy when riding into the sun as it gives far better protection than you can get from a sun visor alone. I've not ridden off-road with this helmet, and if I'm honest, I wouldn't want to. Off-road helmets have more room around the mouth. They flow more air than a road helmet like this as well. If you're really set on a helmet with a peak and you know you're going to be riding mostly on the road, then this is a classy road lid that's got a peak added. If you're not sure you need a peak though, then I'd really suggest looking at an x -Lite X903 Ultra Carbon. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the x -Lite X552 Ultra Carbon helmet. But if there isn't a thing you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.